Hey everybody, it's Allie, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Allie. And today, I'm going to be talking about the lies we tell ourselves that actually hold us back from getting better at photography. So what I want you to do is I want you to complete the following sentence. Think about this. The reason I'm not getting better at photography is because... Bill, finish it up. Because whatever you said is likely not the reason why, and it's probably not true. So for example, I know I myself have said these very things, and I've heard people say them, and I'm gonna say right now that I've learned that none of these actually were the reason why I wasn't becoming a better photographer. For example, I don't have studio space. I don't have a full frame camera. I don't have professional camera. I don't have strobes. I don't have good strobes. I don't have speed lights. I don't have lights. Um, another thing, I can't find any models to work with. My models don't know how to wear makeup. And what else? Oh, oh, I don't know how to do Photoshop and I don't know how to edit pictures. And all of these things are not what's holding you back from getting and becoming a better photographer. The reason I call these lies is because if you really think about it, let's take, I can't find any studio space, okay? So you wanna become a better photographer, can't find studio space, then use what you've got. You live in a tiny little apartment, you can still shoot there. You have a window maybe? You don't need strobes. None of these things, if anything, the things you don't have are things that can challenge you to learn to be able to shoot better without what you think you need. And I personally think that once you get past this kind of thing, that's when you're going to leap. But I know you're not just here to hear me talk about how we lie to ourselves. I mean, we lie to ourselves about all kinds of stuff. But I also want to give you some ideas on how you can overcome them and what at least worked for me to bring up the level of my quality. And I'm going to tell you one of the first things I learned was don't be afraid to fail. This isn't like a life lesson here. It's not just photography, but if you just take some risks and don't be afraid, you might fail. You might try it again. You might fail again. And you might fail a lot. But eventually, you may figure out what's going on and then kind of hurdle over that. You go over that hurdle and you figure that out. I mean, I remember the very first time I used a speed light, it just like, I didn't even know what to do with it. I mean, I just put it on my camera, I fired it at somebody and everything was white. And I was like, oh, what's it doing? It's on top of the camera. The camera should know what to do. Well, yeah. So Having another piece of gear didn't make me a better photographer. If anything, it made me a worse photographer for a while. And I had to keep working with it. And I had to start reading some things. And I had to teach myself. And I had to understand, okay, what's going on? Why does this light do this? And I remember when it got a little bit dark and I flashed someone. I was like, how come my person is lit and everything behind them is black? Because I didn't understand the basic concepts. So first, let yourself fail and then figure out what's going on. And then consider finding a mentor. I've gone through a lot of mentors. Um, many of the people that I've mentored with are still a part of my life. And some people have come through, helped me with things, and I don't really see them anymore, and that's fine too. 
Currently, I am actively mentoring with Frank Dorhoff, and um, Frank is amazing. And what I love about him is he pushes me. He will tell me, Allie, you're overthinking it. Just shoot it. You're overthinking things, Allie. And, and he's probably right, but you know, I always argue with him anyway. But I, I send him an image a month and I get a review from him. And he's a high quality, amazing photographer whose work I really, really like and appreciate. And so I admire what he's doing. So of course, he's a good mentor for me. Uh, not everybody, if you don't want to learn that dramatic look that he does, well then mentor with somebody that has the look that you want. But if you do mentor with someone, you definitely want to find someone that will give you good constructive criticism, that will say, hey, you got this right and you need to work on this. Because if all they tell you is, wow, you're amazing, then either you're better than your mentor and you need to move on, or they're just telling you what they think you want to hear. Because they should be able to tell you where you need to improve and how to get there. And I really think mentoring is critical. Also, we've got the big wide world web. Watch some videos, but like, don't, okay. So you want to get better and you're like, I don't know Photoshop. Okay, so watch some Photoshop videos. But here's the thing. You're not going to get better watching Photoshop videos. You're going to get better because you say, oh, I was trying to remove this, like these zits off this, this model's face. And, and, and I tried all the different healing tools and it just made smudges and it's not, it doesn't look natural and I don't understand it. Okay. Now you go and you find a video on how to clean up skin and you watch that video. And maybe you watch six videos, maybe you watch 10 videos, maybe you watch three videos, but then you have to go do it and see what works for you. Back to mentoring, when I, when I wanna learn something from Photoshop, I started with Kelby One and I learned a lot through my Kelby One subscription, but now I use Flern, P-H-L-E-A-R-N, Aaron Nace from Flern. And I love his teaching style for Photoshop. And so you want to get better, work with a mentor and learn and watch some videos and then go try what you're teaching yourself. And that's going to make a huge difference. So what's the next thing you want to think about? Shoot. Just keep shooting. Shoot, 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 shoot some more. Ye in the beginning, you may have three models. I remember in the very beginning, I had Stephanie and I had Sasha. And then occasionally I had somebody that let me shoot them. And I mean, I just kept shooting. I just kept shooting and shooting and shooting. And I shot a lot of crap. And I shot, occasionally I got something. And the thing is, you need to keep shooting. And then you need to shoot what you love, have fun with it. You, you know, most of us are trying to get better and a lot of us have another job. This is a hobby, this is a passion, this is an art. So shoot what you love and it will come through in the work. And the last tip that I've got is, you really wanna look at um, what inspires you. So if you're inspired, and you can find inspiration anywhere. And so look at the things you enjoy doing. Look at the things you love. And that's where you're going to find your inspiration. Because I hear people say, I don't know what to shoot. I don't understand. I don't know what I want to do. But you know what? If you shoot what you, things that are interesting to you, you're going to approach them differently. And yeah, sure, challenge yourself. Shoot something that you would not normally enjoy maybe to get some better technical skill. But what I'm saying is that when you put your heart and your soul and your passion into this, you don't need to worry about telling yourself, oh, I'm not good enough because I didn't have a studio and I didn't have a pretty enough model or I can't get a professional model because none of those things are really gonna make you better. Just to, get, to go back to those. A studio is great for helping you do things 
easier, but you can usually figure it out or you may have to scale down your vision. Sure, I, I may not be able to do what um, some of the big professionals can do, but I can still put out quality professional work in my family room or my garage or the woods or my backyard. So you can find a public space. You can go into the streets of the city. You can find all kinds of places where you can shoot and just go shoot. And that way you're getting better. You want to approach learning photography from the perspective of what can you do? How, what can, what do I know how to do? And, and then how can I take that to a little bit harder? How can I challenge myself and, and maybe fail and challenge myself? And then you keep doing it. And then you keep doing it. And incrementally you get better. And take advantage when you find opportunities where maybe you can get into a studio space, which is great. And maybe you can get some strobes finally. And maybe you only start off with one. Learn how to shoot that one stroke. But keep it fun. Stay creative. Tell a story. Follow your heart. And you won't go wrong. You will get better. And don't forget, don't stop shooting. Shoot, 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 shoot. Because that's going to be key to getting successful, to becoming the photographer that you're trying to be. And that's it. So I hope these tips have helped you. It's a little bit of inspiration from Allie, and it's just something that I think is really important. And I'm gonna be following up the next couple of episodes with some more tips like this. I'm gonna be talking about how you can do more with less gear. I'm gonna be talking about where you can find some inspiration when you've got a slump, because we all have slumps. And I hope this helps and leave something in the comments. If there's something you're struggling with, leave it in the comments. I am happy to respond to it. So if you've enjoyed this video and you want to have another coffee with Allie, give it a like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and um, I'll talk to you later every Friday, 3 o'clock. Thank you.